name is Carl Adams. I'm the wrestling coach at Boston University. This is the sixth tape in a series of technique videos that I have put together. In this tape, I will be demonstrating freestyle takedown techniques and freestyle strategy. Before a wrestler competes in the international styles of wrestling, he needs to be aware of the differences in freestyle rules and scholastic rules. There are very distinct differences in the rules of the two styles. The strategies differ as well. Wrestlers and coaches also need to be aware that international rules change from time to time. You need to make it a point to keep up with these rules on a yearly basis. However, there are some aspects of international wrestling rules that have remained the same over the years. I'm going to cover seven aspects of these international rules that will most likely remain the same in the future. The first one is risk taking. The International Rules Committee has always felt that the courage to take risk is a trait of the stronger wrestler. That does, the wrestler that does not take risk is usually penalized for stalling and will sometimes be disqualified from the match. Freestyle wrestlers are expected to be aggressive and on the attack. Number two is exposing the opposition's back to the mat from any position for any amount of time. Exposing the opposition's back to the mat can score anywhere from one to five points. I'm going to go over some of the ways that you can score points by exposing the opposition's back to the mat. My partner today is going to be Rick Lynch. Thanks for helping out, Rick. No the first thing I'm going to cover is taking the opposition from the feet to the back. I'm going to use a side trip. Under the present rules, uh, if you take the opposition from his feet to his back, that's worth three points. So in this situation, if you can move here and expose the man's back to the mat, as you take him down, that's a three-point maneuver. Another situation whereby you expose the opposition's back to the mat is when, say, he shoots in on you. For instance, Rick shoots in on an inside step, and you whip him towards his back, and he rolls through, that also scores two points. The thing you need to take notice of there is that I did not necessarily get behind him and score, say, a two-point take, uh, takedown, uh, such as the ones you would score in high school or collegiate wrestling. Here's another situation. Say I snap Rick down into a front headlock position. And although I roll towards my own back, exposing my own back, but at the same time, I initiate the move and expose Rick's back to the mat, I still score two points. In that situation, the thing you want to uh, take notice of is that, again, I did not have to get behind Rick and secure the takedown. Another situation, uh, as far as exposing Rick's back to the mat or the opposition's back to the mat, is take, for instance, a double leg tackle. In freestyle, if at all possible, you always want to try to take the opposition towards his back. Here's a, for instance, I shoot in on a double leg tackle. Rather than lift him up and take him away from the head and he rolls to his belly, what you need to try to do is take him towards his back. Here, like such. Here's another situation where turning the man towards his back can score two points. In freestyle, all you need to do is break a 90 degree plane with his back and you're going to score two points. It could be for any amount of time. Again, if I just take Rick and pull his shoulder up and break a 90 degree plane, I'm going to score two points. Here's another situation. This is called hand to hand. I'm going to do what they call an ankle cross. Okay, turn around this way, Rich. Okay, in this situation, what's going to happen here, so I'm going to have Rick go up to his hands. Now watch, if he goes from one hand to the other hand, that will always score one point in freestyle. In order to get you two points, it has to be shoulder to shoulder. The next thing I'm going to cover, as far as freestyle, freestyle rules are concerned, is the high amplitude throw. This is where you score your highest amount of points. In this situation, what we're talking about here is taking the opposition above your hips in a high arcing motion. When you do that, under the present rules, you can score four points. Here's a few ways that you can take uh, the opposition into a high arcing, high amplitude throw. The first is just a simple headlock. Normally, you can take a headlock in either one of two ways. You can do what we call a sag, okay, here, 
then he goes down to the mat, you take him towards his back. In that situation, he scored three points. However, if you hit your headlock, you step in, you get the hips all the way across his body, and take him up in the air in freestyle, that's a four-point maneuver. <clears throat> Here's another instance where you can score big points with what they call a high amplitude throw. You can step in and do what we call a hip throw. From this position, boom, take it towards his back and over. Again, that's a four-point maneuver. You can also use a basic lateral drop, okay? We're gonna tie him up from this position here. We're gonna step in and we're just gonna hip toss him. Here, take him over. That's also a four-point maneuver in freestyle. So anytime you get into a position so that you can take advantage of a high amplitude throw, you should probably go ahead and try it. That's where you're gonna gain your highest amounts of points. The next thing I want to talk about is your takedown. A takedown in freestyle, say for instance, I snap right down to the mat and go behind and just get my basic takedown. That's worth one point. In high school or collegiate wrestling, that's a two point maneuver. It's always been one point in freestyle. The next situation is your reversal. Okay, now from here, say I hit a switch first switch and come around that's a one-point maneuver in freestyle the escape okay if I can get to my feet and escape say with the stand up and get away from it no points in freestyle that rule has been the same uh, for years <clears throat> the other rule uh, is a touch fall you can catch a man from the feet or you can use a pinning combination from on the mat to touch his shoulders to the mat. All you need to do is touch both shoulders at the same time, and that will be a fall in freestyle wrestling. I'll give you for instance. Say I have a single leg tackle here. I take his head. I'm just going to back trip him and take him right towards his back. If he hits and pops right back up, if both shoulders touch at the same time, that's an instantaneous fall in freestyle wrestling. Again, say he's broken down in this position here. All I need to do, again, if I can get him over and just touch both shoulders, boom, at the same time, that's a fall in freestyle wrestling. Now I will cover some of the takedown techniques that you can use in freestyle wrestling. You can use many of the same techniques that you use in high school and college wrestling. However, some are more high risk than others. There are two things to keep in mind when you're going for takedowns in freestyle wrestling. Number one is, you do not have to get complete control in order to score points from your feet. Uh, we went over that, that just a little bit before. Secondly, you should try to take the opposition to his back whenever possible. Now I'm going to demonstrate some of the takedowns that you can use in freestyle wrestling. The first takedown I'm going to show is a double leg tackle. A double leg tackle is good because you get control of his hips and it's pretty easy to take a man straight to his back, okay? So in this situation, say the opposition reaches, post him up, get on the double leg tackle. Now, from right here, take him straight towards his back. Again, that's a three-point maneuver in freestyle. The fireman's carry is an excellent takedown for, for freestyle wrestling, primarily because when you get your fireman's carry, the man will, in most cases, go straight to his back. So from here, if you hit your fireman's carry, straight to his back. A good freestyle takedown. Other takedowns uh, that you can use in freestyle are throwing techniques. But first, I would like to demonstrate how to attack a man with single leg tackles. This is where most wrestlers that have not had that much freestyle experience get into trouble. The key to a single leg tackle is that when you attack him, you try not to stay directly out in front of him. For instance, if I get in this position here, this is not a very good position in freestyle. A good freestyle wrestler will probably be able to score points for that position. I'll give you a for instance. Okay, say Rick is in on my leg, single leg tackle, head to the inside in this position here. Basically, what I try to do as a freestyle wrestler is keep him out in front. Now, let's say if Rich moves to the outside, 
He had to move with them. Now, what I wait for him to do when he's in this position is step up with either, either leg. I'll show you a couple techniques. From here, say Rich steps up with the outside leg. I'll do what we call a knee pick. You grab behind the knee, lock the arm and the shoulder, you take him over, and you score some points. Say he pops back up and does the same thing again. I can take him with the same maneuver again. Each time I do that, I score two points. So you have to be careful when you attack the man with single leg tackle. When you go into the single leg tackle, the key thing is, is doing what I call outside rotation. That's one of the things you can do. For instance, if I hit a single leg tackle, as soon as possible, as, or as soon as I can, I'm gonna get to the outside on his leg. This way, you're in a position to pick the leg up and score more points in freestyle wrestling. Again, you're gonna try to get to the outside of his leg when you hit your single leg tackle. Here, now you can get behind the plane of his body and score without giving him an opportunity to score points on you. The other way to take this man down with a single leg tackle is coming up to your feet with a high crotch type motion or a high single leg tackle. I'll give you for instance, I'm gonna hit a high crotch. The high crotch allows me to come right to my feet and that way I'm not gonna get in much trouble. Okay, so from here, you hit your high crotch here, you can take him down and put him towards his back. Okay, again, I would like to try to avoid hitting a high crotch and staying in this position because now I give him an opportunity to work his defense. Okay, watch again. When we hit it, we come right to the feet. Right here, up, straight down towards his back. You can also attack a man with high singles. For instance, from an elbow control tie, this type of attack is good. Again, you're up on your feet and you're not putting yourself into a position of danger or a position so that he can take advantage of me when I'm down on the mat. So high singles uh, when you attack a man or the high crotch motion. The other thing is outside rotation when you hit your single leg uh, tackles. Throwing techniques are also very good for freestyle wrestling. However, in high level competition, you will see many more leg attacks than throws. Now I will, I will demonstrate some common throws that are worth three or four points. These throws are more detailed in tape number two, advanced takedowns. The first one I would like to show is a lateral drop. Oftentimes, when you're in competition, you're going to have to engage the opposition. Uh, what I'm talking about is a tie-up position. When you come in, and most wrestlers usually end up in an over on the hook position, uh, jockeying for a better position, or for a position so that they can attempt to get the takedown. From this position, if you're gonna throw a lateral drop, the number one thing you wanna keep in mind, if one man has an overhook and an unhook, and the other man has the same thing, is to try to keep your hips a little bit lower than the opposition's. This way, he's gonna have a tougher time taking you over. For instance, when I lock up in this position, the overhook, on the hook position, I try to get my inside leg back and my lead leg or outside leg forward into the outside of his. I try to control the arm. I like to control it at the tricep position and also down on his forearm. On the other side, I have an underhook. Basically, all you do is control under his armpit. Now, from this position, I always try to start with my inside leg back. This way, when I start to throw, this back leg comes up, I pop the hips, and I take them across. I'm gonna demonstrate this lateral drop throw uh, that you could use in freestyle. <clears throat> the key thing on that throw is to pop your hips high. You have to try to avoid dropping your hips down to the mat when you throw a man with a lateral drop. Again, your starting position is key. You have to keep in mind that he has the same position that you have. Okay, again, from this position, you control the forearm, you control the tricep. Put your head to the same side, you control the overhook, that's to the same side as the overhook arm. On the other side, you have an underhook. If you can, you take your outside leg and try to get it to the outside of his foot. If it ends up even, but just a little bit to the inside, that's still not too bad. 
However, best positioning of the foot should be to the outside. The inside foot should start back. From this position, it allows you to keep your hips low. So that if he tries to throw me, I can just drop my hips down further and he's gonna have a problem trying to take me across. Now from here, what I'm gonna do is step up, pop my hips, pull down on the arm, lift up on the other side and take him across. The key thing is popping the hips. Okay, so from this position here, you step in, pop the hips and take him across. Once you get him over, you just sit through. Another technique that you see quite often in freestyle wrestling is the headlock. And normally wrestlers do it one of two ways. They use what we call a sag. And there's a number of ways that you can tie the arm up. I'll just go through a couple ways. From an inside control tie, this position here, he's on the outside controlling your tricep, and a collar tie. Now from here, what we're gonna do is just step into a sag takedown. Anytime you step into a headlock position, you step in with the inside foot, okay, the back foot steps behind, and you do what we call a back step. From this position, once you get to here, you would like to cut his body off with your hips. Now you can go straight down to your knee, okay, and do what we call a sag, or you can get your hips all the way across this way and take him up over your hips. The first one we're gonna do is a sag. Okay, so we start from an inside control tie, like such collar tie. From this position here, we're going to step in. The back foot steps behind. Once we do that, you can go up on your toes. Now from here, with the sag, we go straight down to that outside knee, take him right down to the mat. Obviously in competition, you hit that with a little bit more speed, like such. The second one, is, is a high amplitude headlock. Okay, again, on that one, we're still gonna work from inside control tie. We step in, we do what we call a back step. Step in with the inside foot, the other foot follows. Now hips go all the way across. From here, you pull down the head, you take the opposition over your hips and down to the mat. So from this position, we step in, back, take them down to the mat, in freestyle, that's worth four points. <clears throat> Another way that you can take the headlock is from an overhook tie-up over his forearm. And again, uh, with this tie, you can take him high or you can sag it. From here, what you want to do is start with one leg forward. Now, when this leg is forward, you don't have to back step with this particular headlock. All you need to do is pull down on this arm, drive your hips into him, shoot the arm across, drive the inside knee down to the mat as you take him through. The key to that headlock is making sure that you pull this arm straight across your body. You want to make sure that you have his forearm tight. You want to shoot this other arm across his neck so that you, so that you eliminate the body space between you and him. Again. Take that inside foot, you step it forward. Now, watch what I do with my feet. From here, you pull this across your body, you pivot on your toes. Inside knee goes down, you shoot this across. Knee goes to the mat, wind your hips down to the mat. We're gonna speed that up just a little bit. So from here, positioning, starting positioning is very important. Hook over his forearm, inside leg forward. From here, you pivot. Okay, your lead toe pivots in a circle and your back toe pivots as well. Just like that. The next technique I want to show is the arm spin. You see this quite often in freestyle. Some wrestlers use it, use it to get out of trouble and quite a few of them use it to score points. We'll talk about the split a little bit later on, but we're going to show you a couple ways that you can hit what we call an arm spin. And there are lots of ways that you can do it, but it's a, it's a technique, technique that you see quite often in freestyle wrestling. Okay, on the arm spin, again, we can start from the over on the hook position. Now from here, what we're gonna be doing is stepping to the outside of his foot with my inside leg or inside foot. So from this position here, I'm gonna be stepping to here. 
to the outside of his foot. Now, as I do that, I'm going to come up under his armpit and go into a high arcing position. This arm comes up high as I go back and take him here and take him over, just like that. In freestyle, that could be worth three or four points, depending on how high you take him. Okay, watch again. <coughs> again, we're going to start from an over on the hook position. You're controlling this arm, you control it at the forearm, control it at the tricep. Now from here, we're going to come under the arm, step to the outside of his foot. As we do that, you arc. High bridge, come all the way through. Now once you get him down, you can pop this shoulder above his, like this, control him in this position here, work for your fall, or you can come cross chest this way, or you can take the arm out and go into a headlock position to work for your fall. Either one of those finishes are good once you hit your underarm spin. That's just one form of your underarm spin. There's a number of other ways that you can hit it. This time, we're, we're going to do what we call a Russian arm throw. Same position. Control his forearm, control his tricep. You come across under his armpit. Now you have two arms or two hands on his tricep. From here, the steps are pretty much the same, but we're going to go into what we call a back step. Okay, so from here, we step to the outside of his foot. We're going to pivot in a circle. The trailing leg is going to go between his legs, this way. So now we don't go into a high arcing throw type position. We're going down to the knees. Okay, watch again. From this position here, the first thing we do is come across. You lock it up tight. You have the control at the wrist, the tricep, and the other arm is on his upper tricep. This is tight. As soon as you get here, now you can start your throw. Step to the outside of his foot with your inside foot. Once you do that, your trailing leg goes between his legs. Just like this. Notice, as soon as I got to this point, my inside knee went down to the mat. Inside knee down to the mat. Now watch, there's a couple ways you might finish this, this technique. From here, you can follow through with your outside leg and take him, take him over. Now, once you get here, you can go here, or into a headlock position, or you can follow all the way through and control them like such. The key thing here is to make sure, sure that you pop your shoulder. Make sure that your shoulder is above his. This way, you don't end up in this position like this. Now Rich has an opportunity to roll back up top and possibly work for the reversal. <coughs> A good way to work on this, this technique, or any one of these techniques, is to work on your footwork. Again, you need to come from this position to here. And we're working on this type motion. Okay? Just footwork. Just like that. Once you get it down, then you can go all the way through with it. Step to the outside, trailing leg goes between his. Just like, like that. Another way that you can take this uh, man with this particular arm tie, you can take him high as well. Okay, again, you come across. Now from here, we're going to step through. We're going to back, back step. As we back step, we're going to take him high up over the hips this way. Okay, again, in freestyle wrestling, that's a four-point maneuver. It's just as easy to take him high as it is to take him all the way through. The key thing is to get your hips across his body so that he has no place to go but up in the air and back down again. Okay, again. Okay, watch this maneuver. Okay, again. From here, you come to this position here. You step to the outside of his foot. Back step. Catch him right up here. Make sure that his arm is, in, is above your elbow joint but below your shoulder joint so that he's here. Hips all the way across. Okay, take them all the way across and down to his back. Now, if you notice, once I get to this position, my shoulder is above his. The other way that you can take that throw 
is by locking over his arm, over his forearm. So from this position here, you might be in a position like this, and you go into a back step. Okay, from here, boom, back step. Same type of position. Take him over like such. Control his forearm tight and close to your body, and you control under his armpit. Okay, one more time. Okay, so from here, from this position here, you can start from a head tie, you can start from an underhook position. Now from here, you're gonna come under, you're gonna step to the outside, and you're gonna pivot. Footwork. Take them across. Keep the arm tight. Control at the forearm. Control them up by his tricep. Those are uh, underarm spin techniques and arm throw techniques. Again, as I said before, those techniques are detailed a little bit more in tape number two, advanced takedown techniques. Oftentimes in freestyle wrestling, when two men engage each other, one ends up in what we call a bear hook position, and the other man, man ends up in a double overhook position. Both men have an opportunity to score big points. The man that's in the best position is the guy with the bear hug. However, the other man has to try to defend himself. So we're gonna show you a technique that you can use uh, to defend a bear hug first. Then we're gonna show you some ways that you can use the bear hug to take the opposition uh, down towards his back. First of all, if a man uh, takes a bear hug position, like such, the first thing you wanna think about is drop your hips low, like this because he has to get me back up in the air before he can, he can throw me or take me with this bear hug. So I wanna drop my, my hips low first. That's your first defense. Now, if he feels like he starts, starts to suck in, then you, you've got to go to your last alternative. Double overhook, uh, suple, tight throw. So from this position, okay, he starts to suck in and you keep your hips down low as, as long as you can. What we're gonna do is just hook right under his armpit. Now you can do this. You can take one leg and step to the outside and have one leg in, or if he allows you, you can get both legs in between. If you get both legs in between, you're gonna be much better off because you can take him in either direction. It would probably be best to take him to the side that his head is on. Again, with this technique, you really have to work on getting your hips in and arching up as you throw him. Okay, so from here, the first thing you wanna do is get your hips back. He starts to suck in, okay, here, right under his armpit. Now, you step between his legs. Now, we're gonna do this slow and show you how this technique works. Knees in, hips in. Up on your toes, high arcing bridge, right here. There, straight down towards his back. And you're in a position where you can, you can get your pin. <coughs> One thing I'll caution you against when going into this double overhook position is going too deep like this. I like to hook right under his armpits. This way I have options. I can come out and go into a headlock. Or from this position, maybe just turn and go down to the mat rather than give him a chance to get a three or a four point maneuver. Again, let's look at this technique again. Man comes in with a bear hug. Lock right under his armpit. As I said before, you can step one leg out, one leg in. Or you can step both legs right between his legs, knees together. When you do this, you, you go up, high bridge, take him back, straight to his back, like such. If you take him towards his head, you're probably gonna be a little bit better off. However, uh, you can also take him in the, in the other direction. The other thing I want to talk about from this position here is the headlock. If a man uh, gets a tight bear hug in, and you know that you're gonna get taken with this thing, you can do a couple things to bail out, or you can do something that, that might be uh, get you points against him. And that's a headlock. Okay, again, he's, he's sucking you in, you have your hips back, he's sucking you in. This is a great position to go into a sag headlock. Watch, you just go from here to here. Sag your hips right down to the mat. To start with, you want to make sure that you keep your hips low. 
as he starts to suck you in, you keep your hips low. All right, now watch. Hips low. Down to the mat. The other thing that happens from this position is, is something we call a slip. We'll get into that in a little bit more detail in just a little bit. That's when he starts to suck you in, and you go for a headlock, and you miss it. Now, if you start it on your feet, both men will be put back up on their feet again, so you don't lose anything. So from that position, when a man secures a tight bear hook, you keep your hips low. You don't have to give him points or give him a takedown. Again, double overhook, headlock, or into a position where you might slip off the headlock, go down, and you might have a slip called against you, and you won't lose any points. Now I want to show you some techniques that you can use with the bear hug. There are two ways that you might control a bear hug. The first is by going two underhooks and locking behind his back. The second is a position whereby you lock and you trap an arm in and lock behind his back. Let's take a look at this position uh, from two underhooks. Okay, when you lock up two underhooks, the first thing you have to realize is that this guy has an opportunity to throw you as well as you do to throw him. So the thing you have to think about is trying to get control of this man's hips. If I'm directly in front of him, parallel to him like such, then, you know, he's in his posi best position to take me for a ride. However, as soon as I can get around to the side and get control of his hips, I'm in a position to take him towards his back, and I'm in a stronger position than he's in. Now, let's talk about some things that we can do from this position. The first one, all we're going to do is just a step around. We're going to step around his near leg, block his hip off, and take him towards his back. When you do this, you step around the leg. Now, as you do that, you make sure that you block his hip in, and as you take him, you arc into him slightly so that you make sure that you get him a little bit above the mat and you're able to take him towards his back. Again, the key thing here is to make sure that you have control of his hips. If you start to step behind and he takes his leg back and you try to throw him, now, this is what might happen. From this position, you can actually take him to either side, but you always take them to the side that you step to, like this. Now from here, again, arc your hips in, make sure that you're ready to step over as you take him down towards his back. The other thing that you can do from this position is take him up in a throwing motion. When you do this, you have an opportunity to get a four point throw, or what we call a high amplitude throw. Okay. So from this position right here, what we're going to do is step behind. Now from here, we have to pop the hips in and take them up into a high arcing throw, like so. Okay? We'll show that one more time. Okay, again, lock them up, step behind his hips. Now, you notice I squat. Now from here, I'm going to pop my hips and take them in a high arcing throw position, like such. So. That would be worth four points in freestyle wrestling. Now let's talk about trapping the arm. Okay, from this position, what you might do is just reach around his back and lock. When I lock from this position, I like to catch him on the opposite side and slightly below his rib cage, like such. Now from here, again, on the first one, we're just gonna step behind his near leg, lock his hip off, and just crunch it down to the mat, like such. Okay, again, from here, lock him below his rib cage on the other side, step behind his near leg, and crunch him down to the mat, like such. Okay, the other thing you can do when you step behind after you lock is do a little arcing throw. So from here, we step inside, we step behind the hips. Now from here, we pop the hips up and we take them towards his back, like such. So those are two ways that you could take him by locking and trapping the arm in, right here. 
One, you step behind and you just crunch him down to the mat. The second one, you take him into a hierarchy throw position. Now I will talk about the slip and how it can be a very important aspect of freestyle. The slip is called when a wrestler initiates a technique and misses the move. If the wrestler initiating the move follows all the way through and ends up on the bottom, he will not lose any points. I'll demonstrate what I'm talking about. Okay, let's take the headlock for instance. Say Rick comes in on a bear hook situation right here. He starts to really press into me and I go for my headlock and I slip off. In freestyle wrestling, Rick would not be awarded any points. That would be called a slip. Okay, again, again, he starts coming into a headlock or bear hug, and he starts pressing, pressing in towards me, and I throw my headlock and miss it. That's called a slip. However, if you're in a situation where he's into a bear hug position and you start your headlock and he stops the motion right in the middle, then he scores his one point takedown. So a slip occurs when you go all the way through and down to the mat, and the other man ends up on top. If he stops you halfway through, then he's going to be awarded the points. Another situation where that occurs oftentimes is with an underarm spin. Say again, Rich starts coming in after me, really bowing in, and I go to an underarm spin position, and I miss my throw, and he ends up on top. That's a slip throw. Uh, Rich will not be awarded any points in that situation. However, if I start my underarm spin and he stops me halfway through, I don't go all the way to the mat, and then I go down, now he will be awarded his one point takedown. The slip is very, very, very important in freestyle. You can use it as a tactical move to get yourself out of trouble, or you can use it to try for a technique, and if you miss the technique, they will not penalize you for taking that risk. The next segment of this tape will be on freestyle defenses to single leg tackle. The first situation we're going to look at is when the opposition shoots in on a single leg tackle with head to the inside. Okay, say he shoots in on a single leg tackle. Okay, when this situation occurs, the first thing I want to think about from a defensive standpoint is try to keep this man out front. Now watch, if, if Rick can work himself out to the side and behind the plane of my body, now he gets in a better and better position to complete his takedown. So when he starts to move in that direction to the outside, I'm going to start to move with him this way. I'm going to control this side of his body and not give him an opportunity to get to the outside. The other thing that you need to be concerned with when he gets in on a single leg tackle is you, you know that you have to stop him from getting you up in the air or getting back to his feet. So once you get him down in this position, you want to keep enough pressure on him so that you can keep him down on the mat and out in front of your body. Now, here's what happens after a while, after he's been here for a little bit. You have control in this position. You're defending his single leg tackle. One of the first techniques we're going to show is just a simple knee pick. Okay, Rich, let's turn around this way. Now, when you have him in, in this position, oftentimes he'll step up with the outside leg or the inside leg. In both of these situations, you can work yourself uh, into a two-point uh, situation. For instance, say he steps up with the outside leg. Okay, number one, you want to stand fairly tight to him. You want to control his hip here. When this happens, you're going to reach behind his knee. You're going to take the other leg. Let's turn around. Okay, again, he steps up with the outside leg. You reach behind his knee. With the other leg, you're going to step over his head, and you're going to tap his head and his arm in. And all you do is roll him towards his back. So from here, you go from this position to here. You trap the knee. You trap his head in, you trap the arm in, and you roll him towards his back. When you do that, if he doesn't pop right back up, it's a good idea to roll your hips right up top. Now you have him in a situation where you can work for your pin. Okay, again, he's in on a leg. He steps up with the outside leg. Reach behind his knee, okay? Reach behind his knee. When you reach behind his knee, catch him right at the joint. Pull it up tight, close to his body. Now, on the other side, we're going to step and step up and trap his head in, and we're going to trap his arm in. We're going to lift his knee up and take him towards his back. So we're in this position. We have him, have him squeeze in 
fairly tightly. You trap his head and arm in. You have control of his knee. So from here, step up. Now, post, lift. Now, if he pops right back up again, if he's a beginning freestyler, oftentimes he'll step up with the very same leg again. Take the same maneuver. Tap his head in, tap his arm in. Again, you have a situation where you can pick up two points. Okay, now, same leg, same situation. Say he comes up with the outside leg, the, excuse me, the inside leg. Okay, you control him here again. Now this time, you already have his head trapped in. His head is to the inside. You're pressuring into him, keeping him fairly tight in this position. If he steps up, go ahead, step up. Now from here, you go behind his knee. Now you want to sit your outside knee under, post your hand on the mat, and take him in the other direction. If you can catch him here and rotate your hips up top, then that's what you want to do. Now you have an opportunity to work for your pin. Okay, that's the first technique that you can do from that position and score points. Now, the key thing you want to notice about this particular technique is that you don't necessarily have to take this man down and get behind him before you score points. That's a very, very important concept. All right now, the next thing we're going to do is, is a belly roll. This is a very good freestyle technique. Again, opposition, get on your leg, single leg tackle position. You want to keep his head trapped to the inside. Say you start out first by trying to get your leg back like such. You're controlling his, his waist to control his body right here. Now, he starts to pull your leg in. Okay, you get your leg in. Again, you want to keep him parallel out in front of your body. You want to reach as deep as you can on his waist. Now, from this situation, you want to step up. You want to trap his head in and his arm in again. Now, from here, as you step up, you're going to pick everything in. Post the hand on the mat and just roll him towards his back. Now, if he pops right back up again, it allows you to work the very same move. You can do it again and again and again. Again, watch. Deep waist, all the way across. You want to step over his head, trap his head in, you want to trap his shoulder in. Now, once you get to this position, you post the arm. Now, with your forearm, you thrust him across towards his back. Now, if you get him in this position and you can do this, rotate your hips up top, then you want to take, the, take it that way. Because now, you have him on his back and you have an opportunity to work for your pin. The next thing you can do, say if a man goes to a single leg tackle, head to the inside, is pop his head to the outside. Okay, say you're down in this position here and uh, you, you want to work into a crotch lift position. From here, what you can do is you dig his head to the outside, like such, now, what you have to do is take your foot and step up with it, like this. You have to work yourself around the corner so that you can go into what we call a crotch lift. From here, let's turn around. What we're doing is we're getting one foot underneath his body so that we can gain control of his hips. So from here, what we did was come up and pop his head to the outside. As soon as we did that, you step around the corner, like such. Now, you go in the crotch, control him here, now, you're in a position to get your two points, like that, okay? Again, he's in on a single leg tackle. Now, from here, you want to come to your feet, pop his head to the outside. You want to step underneath his body, make sure that you're in a position so that you can get your hips under him as you start to lift. Step around, like such. Now, from here, okay, he's still on his knees, you step around, right in the crotch. From here, you just take them up. That would be worth two points in freestyle wrestling. Now, the other situation you want to look at is a situation where the, the man that's shooting the takedown is in a, in a position with his head to the outside, like such. Okay, you can go to the exact same situation we did before with the crotch lift. Keep him down on the mat, okay? You already have your inside leg underneath his body. Control the arm, step around into the crotch, lift him up, take him over for a crotch lift. Another maneuver that you can do from this position is trap the arm in. Okay, so you have him in this position here. Say he starts to step up even. From here, you want to trap the arm in. Now with the other arm, let's turn around, 
you want to go around his waist and control his waist, like such. So you have one arm trapped in on this side, okay? You have to really uh, push this thing in tight and make sure that you're in a position to get your weight down on him. The other hand goes around his waist. Now, this is the important hand now, okay? From this position here, the hand that you control this, this near arm with goes in his crotch from here. Now from here, you need to get your hips in, get them up uh, on top of your body, and just arc your hips from here, okay? That's a two or three point maneuver, depending on how high he goes. Okay, again, watch what we're doing here. Okay, say he shoots a high crotch. You stop him in this position here. Notice immediately, around the waist, trap the arm in. Now from here, we're gonna go on this crotch, step up, go on this crotch right here. Now you squat and you lift, take him straight over. Two or three point maneuver. That's a real good technique to use when the opposition's head is to the outside. I would like to thank ASICS Tiger for sponsoring this technique video. This video was the first of my series on freestyle wrestling. Tape number seven will cover freestyle offense and defense on the mat. I enjoyed working with you. Best of luck with your freestyle wrestling.